Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Sly 2 Band of Thieves. Last time, we robbed the last of John Basan's Iron Horse trains, took out his entire train empire, and also swiped not one, not two, but three clockwork parts. Tonight, we are going to be heading into episode 7, where we still have to deal with Basan, because while we were able to take out his empire, we never actually confronted him directly. So, it's time to head back up to the Great White North and deal with quite the menace up there. Things just weren't right up in Canada. Random acts of violence were popping up like weeds, and the Northern Lights, well, they just weren't right. One night they'd be brighter than ever, and the next, gone. In Nunavut Bay, I overheard talk between Jean Bassan and his mysterious partner, Arpeggio. Somehow, those two are behind it all. Tracking the source of the disturbance was easy. By simply following the lights, we were led north to an immense lumber camp. The sheer number of fallen trees advertised Jean Bisson's presence and that he was in possession of the clockwork talons. The Thievius Raccoonus makes numerous references to the talons slicing through plates of steel. A skilled lumberjack like Bisson could clear a forest in hours while wielding the artifacts. Those talons have got to go, both to finally do away with clockwork and to save the environment from his twisted sense of progress. The world just doesn't need to make space for another strip mall. Sly, I don't know what you're talking about. I think the world could use at least one more strip mall. All right. Well, before we head out, as per uh, usual here, it's time for us to go back onto the internet and see what we can get, and also see if there was any loot to sell, but no, there wasn't. Okay, so we got the Reduction Bomb for Bentley, the Guttural Roar for Murray, and Thief Reflexes for Sly. Honestly, I never find myself ever using any of these gadgets. At, at this point, there's like one maybe two more gadgets that i find useful for sly guttle roar is okay if you're feeling a little overwhelmed with murray basically he does a giant roar that from his boss fight and it scares enemies away but it's only temporarily it's kind of like the smoke bomb but they won't give up the chase it just gives you a little bit of breathing room from them reduction bomb is just basically like a normal bomb like the sleep bomb or bentley's just standard bombs but instead of making enemies fall asleep or you know blowing them to smithereens it is basically uh like his size destabilizer shrinks enemies in the area so it covers more than one enemy but i just i never find myself using it i'll get the thief reflexes for sly though just because well we're going to be playing a sly for a bit so of course i get it and we're going to have to save Bentley and Murray's stuff for later. Things are getting pretty expensive. And when we get into the final episode of the game, oh boy, do things get really expensive for that. Okay, so here's what we know. One, Arpeggio's blimp is on its way to pick up a battery from Jean Bisson. And two... The only way we'll get a crack at Arpeggio's clockwork braid is by finding a way to sneak aboard his blimp. But before we do that, we'll need to snag the clockwork talons off John Bassan. Time is short, we've got a lot to accomplish. True, true, but first things first. This lumber camp isn't on any of my maps. I need you to poke around and take some recon photos. They'll help to get my sensors oriented. No problem. Recon photos, I got covered. In anticipation of the icy climate, I took the liberty of modifying your cane. It can now separate into two smaller canes. Useful for ice climbing. Try ascending to the top of that sheet of ice. Just jump and hit the circle button to dig in. Bentley, when did you have the time to reduce the size of my cane, split it into two, and find a way to put them back together? It's resourceful, I'll give you that, but also seems pretty impractical. Well, we'll make our way over to this ice wall over here. Jump and hit the circle button. And there you go. Slice cane splits into two, although 
for some reason it goes to pocket size. I kind of wish it would just his main cane just like split into two different canes. It was just like one half of each side of the cane. But whatever. It's just a minor nitpick. It's just for gameplay purposes. Set up here. It's good to see my cane upgrade perform so well in the field. Now scout the area. I could really use the recovery. Oh boy. Yeah, you're really gonna learn to. Why are the northern lights inside the water? I guess that's supposed to be a reflection effect, but at the same time, it just looks like they just put the northern lights in the water itself. So yeah, we got a lot of things to recover. We also have to deal with a lot of eagles in this level, whereas the eagles really just kept themselves to the top of the mountain in the last chapter. There are a lot more places here where the eagles will attack you, so you need to be super careful about it. We need to take a picture of Jean Bassan's house up there, some saw blades over there, the bear that's roaming around out here, and I believe a boat out in the middle of the water. I think I'm not actually getting the thing pop up while well, I'm picking the wrong button. Not that. Yeah, I'm not getting a pop up for it. Hmm, weird. Careful around these porta potties. Uh, the outhouses around here are actually a bit dangerous. You need to be super careful when you're coming across one because there could be a chance that there's a guard just sitting in there doing his business and he'll hear you outside, break open the porta potty, and come out to kick your butt. So you want to be super careful when going by. You'll be able to tell if there's a guard in there because the little thief sensor will be going off. All right, let's get a shot of that bare ass. This place is bear country, all right. Interesting. He's putting out a slight radio signature. Hmm. Interesting indeed. He's also in the main area where there's a bottle. Uh. Just gonna. Yeah. Smash and r run. Ooh. I'm surprised that bear did not actually see me. Of that get that bottle head up here take care of this dude and grab this bottle I'm going to actually go out of my way to get as many bottles in one go as possible because the vault for this area while not during the recon phase it's actually during the first like main phase of the heist so of course I would want to go and get as many bottles in one go before we go and do that mission Let's just smash this this, I would say this is probably the second to hardest level to find clue bottles in just because it, it, there's a lot of verticality to this level and also some pretty evil crevices that this game likes to hide the bottles in. And I'll, I'm just going to say this right now, I'm not the biggest fan of the logging camp. I actually used to hate the music of this level just because uh, compared to the orchestral masterpiece of this game that was episode 6's music, episode 7's kind of not as good in my opinion but I've come to love it over time it's got that nice little like relaxing tune where uh, you could say that episode 6 is music was more fast-paced and more uh, active because of the setting of it with all the trains and everything around there this one it seems this is more of a remote, a remote location and it, it's just a, a quiet snowfall esque area I can see why they they changed the tune for this Still prefer episode 6's music, but 7 still does a pretty good job. Those saw blades look particularly old. I guess this logging camp has been around for a while. The maintenance of these things is impeccable. Also, there's my checklist. Thankfully, I've been getting pretty lucky with my pathway to clue bottles because I've just been running into them left, right, and center. There's one over there, but there's a couple up on these ice shelves up here, and I want to get them because they are kind of out of the way, and they also coincide with the mission that has the vault in it. And uh, just to save me some serious backtracking, I would like to go and snag these first. Take care of that. And I gotta deal with this guy. It actually would give me a chance to try out our new thief reflexes. So let's get rid of the alarm clock. And basically, it just gives you matrix time from the first game. 
and that's about it. Honestly, I never saw the appeal of the T-Reflexes aside from just making Sly look cool. That's about it. It's just like, it wastes uh, your ability points over time. And also, it doesn't really help you avoid enemy attacks because, well, ranged attacks from enemies kind of track Sly, as I've come to learn. The only thing I would say that's a range attack that doesn't track Sly would be when a flashlight guard shoots at you, but you're out of range of his flashlight. I also was going the wrong way. I thought there was a clue bottle down here, but I was wrong. Uh, if you're not in the, the shine of the flashlight, then the flashlight guard's attacks won't ever hit you, but it, say like the goose guard th trying to hit me with the snowballs or the flashlight guard's actually shooting at me while I'm inside their light, then that would be a guaranteed hit on Sly. I guess... The only way I could see Sly being, or uh, seeing that ability being good for Sly would be when you're trying to get away from guards, you know it's a heavily populated area, and you just need to make some snap decisions on which way to go so you can slow down in time to process which would be the, the best way to get out of there without having more guards chase after you. Alright, just want to make sure that there were no other bottles. I I thought there was a bottle around here. I think it might be down by that water wheel. Yep, there it is. Right, take a picture of John Bassan's house. John Bassan's house. The lair of the beast. The dead of evil. The epicenter of ecological destruction. Okay, tone it down, Bentley. You're going a little bit hard on him. Okay, let's just hop down here. Need to be super careful when landing on that thing because I don't think Sly can do a spire jump onto it. You can do a spire jump onto the little icicles that are on the water wheel itself. But yeah, I'm not seeing any of the blue ores, so you need to be super careful dropping down to pick up the clue bottle. There, there we go, another clue bottle. We're almost halfway done with the clue bottles and we haven't even gotten halfway through the recon yet. Ooh, you got something on you. And I hear a clinking clink. Oh boy. Just rob him of all his valuables and hopefully he doesn't walk into bear country. And hopefully his friend doesn't run that corner. But thankfully it doesn't seem to be the case. Alright, there's the clink. Alright, that's where his friend rounds. Surprising that the bear is very docile to the guards, but hostile only towards you. I say as the guard just gets attacked by a bear. Uh-oh. I didn't think the bear was actually going to see me up there. I'm just going to go this way. Let him deal with all that mess. Alright, halfway done with bottles, and I see number 16. Oh, boy. And I think it's time to make a hasty escape. Alright. Uh, oh, yeah. If I remember right, this is actually the only clue bottle in the game that Murray or Bentley can get. It, it's the only one that Sly cannot get because the jump height for this is out of Sly's reach. Unless I can do some, like, trick jump. No, I can't. Yeah, it's actually impossible for Sly to get... Uh, uh, actually, no, I think I can get that with Sly. And it's on the way to another recon photo area, so I might as well go give it a shot. If I can get it, cool. If not, then I guess I'll just have to come back here with Bentley or Marie. Right down there. There is a clue bottle right here, though, so let me snag that real quick. Okay, yeah, you can get it with Sly from up there if you have a paraglider. Otherwise, you'll need to use uh, the turnbuckle launch or the hover pack for Murray and Bentley to snag that one. Hmm. I remember as a kid, for the longest time, I never could be able to get that with Sly. I always thought that was just a specific bottle that Murray or Bentley could get. Alright, let's get a picture of the boat. My sensors detect a Wi-Fi link to that boat. It must be piloted by computer. Okay, that should do it. Now for the real point of interest. 
Head for that lighthouse and try to find a way to sneak in. You say it's weird that that boat just has Wi-Fi. Maybe he just wanted to give his guys some Wi-Fi so they can go on the internet or watch movies or watch Netflix or something out on the water while they're doing their work. I like how Bentley just immediately goes to, oh yeah, that boat's uh, remote piloted. Yeah, Topaz. I was kind of hoping you would have something more valuable on you. Yep. And I'm just going to ride the water wheel up. So we got to go all the way down there. But before we go down into the lighthouse bottom, I want to go up to the top of the lighthouse. Hmm, thought I could hear a clanky clink. Uh, my OCD-ness is acting up. I must grab whatever shiny he has in his pocket because it is valuable and it seems to be a sapphire. Kind of hoping for a ruby. Rubies are the most precious of all the gemstones because it is the biggest out of all of them. And also, it's the only one that flashlight guards carry. Alright, there's another clue bottle right there by the outhouse. Before we go in there, I want to not get caught by this guard, but I do want to climb up to the top of the lighthouse real quick. It's a bit of a climb, and also you got to deal with uh, falling icicles onto your head, but it shouldn't be too hard to deal with. Just keep climbing up this way. I'm surprised that the ice is actually melting, seeing as how cold everything around it is. Here. And while there is our third treasure, because the second one was down by the silo over there and the first one was up at John Bassan's house, let us snag another clue bottle at the very top of the lighthouse. And then make this guard's life a lot harder. Alright, inside the lighthouse we go. From Bentley, huh? Alright. That's the battery charger, but where's the battery arpeggio's coming to pick up? I don't know why, but every time Bentley comments on the battery charger, it just sounds like Shaggy from the, the YouTube poop Scooby Doo uh, Scoop uh, Scooks thing, where it's just like, but where's the caveman? This is why we had to take the secret en entrance in here because a simple chair is propping up against the door and we can't get through the front door with it. I was right. The entrance is barred from the inside. Oh yeah, that's right. I didn't actually make note of it. Uh, if you actually tried to go through the front door or just like rub up against it, Bentley comments that the door is locked and you can't go through there. Thankfully, things would have been a little awkward if we came through the front door because jean Bassan's literally right on the other side of it. Got it. Just looking at that spinner makes me dizzy. Might as well get a shot of old Jean Bisson. All right, if you say so, Bentley. There you go. Hold on. Work it. Work it. Come on. Come on. Smile for the camera. Nope. 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 Now you're looking away. Now you're looking away. Come on. Nope. Nope. All right, fine. There. It's close to a oh, look at the cameras right. we're gonna get. To himself. Come on, Jean. You got it in you. Those lumberjack games need some more competition, eh? What would attract the participants? Bullseye! I'll post the clockwork talons as a trophy. That should bring in the competition. Although, who am I kidding, eh? I'm going to win just like every other year. <laughs> oh, it's tough being this tough. It sure is, yeah. Head back to the safe house. We need to talk about these lumberjacks. Uh, is John okay back there? He kind of froze looking up into the sky. Well, guys, 
Jean Bisson has unknowingly thrown down the gauntlet. With the Clockwork Talons as a trophy, we'd be fools not to participate in his lumberjack games. Fortunately, due to frequent avalanches, a log chopping guide was frozen in a wall of ice not far from our position. Sly, you're in charge of acquiring the book. I'm sure it will prove invaluable. Now, we're all aware that Arpeggio's blimp is coming to pick up another battery. To sneak aboard without incident, I'd recommend we pull a Trojan horse and stow away inside the battery. However, the location of the device is still a mystery. We need some inside information. So, working together, you two will infiltrate the Moose Guard's secret RC combat club. Those guys all work in the lighthouse. If you win the battle, I'm sure they'll talk. Despite his antique mind, Jean Bisson's no fool. To keep tabs on him, we'll need to bug his house, steal the radio tags off local bears, and then jerry-rig them into a sensor array. It's a challenging set of tasks, and that blimp's on its way. Let's get to work. <laughs> 